Hey, this is Real Talk Hip Hop with JC. Victory. And we're outside of Symbol Nightclub, downtown Windsor. We're about to interview Future the Prince, that's Drizzy Drake's official DJ. Yeah, we got a, a big interview set up for him. We got to ask him a few questions. He's been on tour to places such as Atlanta, Dubai, Brazil. Uh, we're just going to go in-depth with him in the, in the next few uh, hours, and we got a lot to, yeah. lot to talk to him about. So, so he's down here for Windsor Sports Weekend. We're going to get in here. We're going to have a video interview, and you can catch the audio clip Monday at midnight on Real Talk Hip Hop on 99.1 CGM FM. It's Real Talk Hip Hop with JC. Uh, Victory. And we got a special guest today. We got Future the Prince. Dizzy Jake's official DJ. Real Talk Hip Hop. Yeah, so you do uh, yeah, you like that? <laughs> how you doing? How you like the weather? We're good, man. We're good. 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 We're and the DJ on some uh, scratching? Uh, yeah, I did last night. <laughs> yeah. Last night and... How was uh, How was Thursday's uh, Bill Clinton fundraising? Doing good? Uh, it was cool. I mean, it was it was a foundation of charity. It's quick, like you could buy songs or whatever. But it, it was just good to be a part of it. You know the energy. Did you get to meet uh, ex president? Yeah, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, we're hanging out. So I watched a few videos of you on YouTube, but uh, I was just I wanted to know how much how was the uh, Lady Dreams and Nightmares tour? Uh, how was the tour like as a whole? Yeah, just explain your overall thoughts. It, it, was, it was incredible. It was like, you know, what, what we tried to accomplish, we had a chance to accomplish. It was like, it was two different moves, you know, that was the whole thing behind it. It's like, you know, you get these, um, you, you, it's like you get both sides of it, you know, you get all the happy, fun stuff, yeah. and then you get, you know, and then you also get like, you know, insight into, into who he is and, you know, his personal record and stuff like that. A lot of people really do concerts. They just try to formulate as many hits as they have to like do a show. Yeah. So they don't really like have different dynamics to it and stuff like that. But it was good because it's like you know what we had with the lights and the pyro and, and everything that we were able to accomplish. We spent a lot of money. Yeah. How was it? Money than he should have, but it, it was great. How was it working with uh, just like Drake? Uh, I know you worked with Jay Cole. You took in uh, at the October's Mario Festival. You were DJ for Jay Z. Like how's it like? Just one moment you're in Toronto, and then the next moment you're just DJing for all these like great hip hop lyricists. Uh, it, well, I mean, it stems from the great. The great part about it is also it all stems from our show, right? Yeah. So it's like it's like everybody. It's it's great to see these different acts and these different artists coming into like our world and what you know what Drake's been able to create in terms of you know a lot of people don't know this, but he is in every phase of this show. Like he he does the set design. You know, he gets with his dad. And involved with the set design, he gets involved with the lighting, he gets involved with, you know, the cues and, and how everything is set, like, in, in terms of where everybody's positioned, where the lights are positioned, he's in every step of it, so it's, like, it's great to see when people come into, like, our space and, and perform, so it's, it's easier to work with them once you're, you know, they're in your space, so it's, like, it's cool, like, Cole is, Cole's a great guy to work with, you know, obviously, that will be all that, so it's, like, probably the most incredible show, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I have uh, my brother lives in Toronto. You can check that out. Yeah, it's a really cool show. Yeah. And you, you were on set of the uh, Aston Martin music video. Mm -hmm. You worked with uh, DJ Hell and you got to meet him. You worked with your uh, good friend Drake mm -hmm. and uh, Rick Ross as well. Just mm -hmm. explain your overall thoughts on that. How, how was that? Um, it's cool. I mean, it's, it's great. Like, once you're on the inside and, like, you know, once you get to meet people and stuff like that, you really get to see, you know, how everything goes, you know, and yeah. how everything works. It's, it's great to see how, how much relationships play a, a role in, in, you know, making music and and making great music. You know, ASMR music is just a, a product of, like, you know, Drake and Ross knowing each other and, and wanting to get on a record together. And, you know, that's what came out of it. So, so it's cool. And you just put a mix of the mixtape. Yeah, a lot of the yeah. Not too long ago. Uh, what's the feedback from like on that? Uh, that's always good. I mean, what I try to do is, is give people the whole goal with that mixtape is just to give people something to listen to in the car and you know, all the music. You know, I'm not, I haven't been big on, you know, a lot of people feel like mixtapes, like you have to put a whole bunch of new records that nobody knows and exclusive records and stuff like that. Like, yeah, that's cool, but it's like those those records don't even, you know, last long. Yeah. It's like you, you put a mixtape out and it gets dated if you just try to put as much, you know, new, new, new material that people don't know on it. So what I try to accomplish with the mixtape is like, you know, give everybody all the songs they love and, and love to party to and, and, and love to enjoy all the fun plays so that they can put it in and they know exactly what they're getting. So yeah, and like, not to focus on Drake, right now I want to focus on you, the DJ, like, 
growing up in Toronto and the hip hop scene, like how would you describe Toronto hip hop scene? And like what what made you like become a DJ? Like what what made you say I'm just gonna do this, get on the turntables and, and create mixtapes and stuff? I became a DJ because I, I needed a hobby. You know, I was like, I, I, you know, I was going to school. And, you know, I was in high school. And it was, <laughs> it's trying after a while. You know, it's like yeah. being in the same routine and being, in this, you know, going to school and going home from school and then doing homework and then going back to school the next day and doing it over and over and over again. I just needed a change of, of scenery, a change of, you know, lifestyle. Yeah. So you know, I, I went and you know, I decided that I'm gonna get into. Uh, it just, it was random because it was like, you know, I had this record store that was right by my school that I walked by every single day. And then, like, randomly, like, somebody I knew was selling a pair of turntables. And, you know, yeah. I was buying a pair of turntables and I went to the record store to buy a record. And, and then I eventually started working at the record store and I started to learn to DJ. And then, and then it just all came together. I think it was just a matter of me needing something in my life to kind of, you know, get me out of my routine and something for me to have fun with. And then Was there any like specific DJ or like uh, a person you looked up to that kind of made you want to pursue it some more? Like uh, I know the originator DJ Cool Herc, like he the the founder originator, like the founder of the hip hop. So he's a DJ. So did, like, is it important for other DJs too to know the history? Because DJ is an important aspect of. There's some people who like consciously try to find out the history of DJing and you know where it started and the history of hip hop and you know and know the roots of things and but you know they're doing it for their own you know enjoyment yeah. and their own whatever they you know get out of it. But then you know there's just some kids that really just you know grew up and 50 Cent was their favorite rapper you know and, and you know or you know Soldier Boy was their favorite rapper, whoever it may be you know it's just like. Who you can't you can't take that away from them. That's their fun, you know. Oh yeah, it's just like it you just, love hip hop. Everybody, I think everybody loves hip hop for the own reason, and you know I don't knock anybody's festivals. Yeah, it's just, you gotta. I, I just don't want to feel like you have to. If you want to go and search histories about you know what your craft is or whatever it may be, I don't. I don't think it makes you any less of a DJ or any more of a DJ if you know you know where it yeah. originated or where it originated. You know, as long as you have fun and your job is to make other people have fun, as long as you can do that. Then <laughs> Alright, you've got uh, DJs in places such as Dubai, uh, you can do Atlanta, Miami, Brazil. Just explain uh, your overall thoughts going to different cities around the world. Um, I think that's the most important thing to, to know is that like, once you go into a new place and you know, once you go into a new city, you always start there and like figure out what's hot there and figure out you know what people are listening to. It might be a whole different genre of music that you've never heard before, you know? Yeah. It might be a whole set of artists that you've never heard before and it's your job as soon as you get into a particular city to to really do your research and because at the end of the day you're not DJing for yourself, you know? It's like you, you're really playing for people and you're playing for people who came to see you and you know, they want to see what you're about so you gotta incorporate, you know, what you bring to the table as a DJ because they want to see, you know, where you're from and what you represent and then also like show them respect by like, you know, reading up on what's going on in their city and, and try to be a part of their local, you know, hip hop community or urban community or electro community, whatever you decide to play, you know. How often do you have homesick in the Toronto for the home? Like, do you ever, like, because I know you're on the tour a lot, like, do you ever get really homesick? You, you, you miss the people, you know, but in terms of, like, and you miss your city, right? Yes. It's like, you miss the, the little things that you always, you are used to doing in your city and being you know, seeing your friends that that you haven't seen in a while, and then obviously you know your family yeah. that's the most important thing. But but it's it, it's so much easier for me. You know, it's like it's so much easier for me because my friends are on the road with me. Yeah. So, so it's makes like, it yeah, it's like my you know, my friends are on the road with me, so it's like I'm kind of already with the guy that I'd be hanging out with in Toronto anyways. Like so listening to your uh, past interviews, it seems like like you said, when you're on the road, like drinking, like the whole team, it's, it's just not like a team. It's more of like a uh, to the, to the family. family. Yeah, I know. We're actually, yeah, that's, that's where it all, that's how we got to this point. 
Yeah. So sometimes so everybody got to this point. Everybody got to this point because you know we all believed in it and we all believed in, in, in each other and the team and we were together all the time. So yeah. Like, you just kind of like function as a family. So your brothers, you see them all the time. You're around them all the time. You begin to you know once you're around people so much, they begin to influence you and, and begin to, you know you guys kind of become so like minded. Yeah. You guys so understanding of each other that. It's kind of like us, like when we do different pop shows and we go around and we do it weekly, you kind of grow and it's like you become a family. Yeah. And like, would you, like, since the experience is straight through movements, like, do you have any specific moment or experience that like stands out through this whole like straight movement? Anything that came coming up? I've seen so much in the last two years that it's like the pinpoint one thing. <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> pretty <laughs> change Toronto to people people never felt like people never had that in Toronto before you know you can go to New York and you can go to Summer Jam and you can go to all these other cities and go to the radio they have these big radio shows that they bring all these acts all at once yeah. you know and it's like and you know you have guys who who've toured so many years in the states and have been there so many times you know like Jay's been to Philly a bunch of times and been to LA a bunch of times and you know and been everywhere a yeah. bunch of times and it's like to to do a concert in your city and bring all those people out for your city in one show and and, and to give them that you know make them feel a part of your success because you were able to like you know pull out cards that you've earned you know you brought M to Toronto after you know? ten years you know it's like it's just kind of yeah it's not it's not really a, not necessarily it's like laying down the ground yeah it's like, no it's it was it was it was. It was it was showing your city that you love them, you know. It's like I, you really made an effort, and you, you, you know, you did whatever you could to make sure that everything happened the way it happened. And it's like for it to all come together, for it to be a success, and for it to actually play out and 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 all happen the way it happened. I think that was one of the most successful moments that we've had as a team, and he's had as so an individual. In his well, career. it was a great step for Canadian hip hop for Drake to do that, and like I think the city of Toronto and Canada really needed that. Our own like festival, like you said. New York, the United States, especially New York, has Summer Jam, and that's like so big. So I think he just laid down for like future groundwork for more artists in Canada to come up because we have a lot of talented artists out here, like a lot through the whole country. And like kind of him showing what he could do through his talents is, is telling the other, other artists, even locally here, like if you put in the work and you grind and you just show what you have, you know, you could make it. I just got a question for you. It's out of the blue. <laughs> uh, how'd you come up with the name Future the Prince? I didn't come up with it. It was given to you? Yeah, it was given to me. I, you know, when I started DJing when I was 15, and so I worked at this record store, and it it just always happened that, like, you know, when you work at a record store, all the other DJs come there yeah. to buy yeah. records. So, you know, I started building these relationships by saving certain DJs' records mm -hmm. and, like, you know, like calling guys and saying, hey, we just got this, like, you know, you should come pick it up and all that stuff. And it's like, in return, you know, they gave me opportunities that most DJs in my position, you know, in my position wouldn't have got. You know, they get, you know, they, I was 15, 16, you know, they were letting me come to the clubs with them, they were letting me, you know, open up for them and stuff like that. So it's like the one thing that was constant with them was just like, yo, you're next, you know, like you just keep working hard and you're next, you're the future, you're, you got next, you got next, you got next, you know, and that they are. A lot of guys always looked out for me, so it was just kind of like that's how it all came together. Yeah. Me and JC like to get creative with the questions too, and we always ask artists, DJs, and producers. I have one special question for you. If you could, since you're a DJ, and say uh, you go on tour, and if you could have any three artists, any like living or dead, who would they be that you could DJ for? Who I could DJ? Yeah, for? like who who would get get on a tour and you could DJ, go city to city, you know, and DJ for them. Living or dead, just three, just okay, three artists. Okay, so there's a difference. If I could DJ, if I could go on tour with them, or if I could yeah. do one show. We could going do one on tour. We'll say go. We we could do one show.